You want to talk plants? Late April, here at the Pacific Rim Institute, together with Kamas. Common Kamas, Blue Kamas, Lil Kamas, Kamasia Quamash. Family, Asparagaceae. Cousins, Kamasia siloides on the eastern side of North America, which has smaller, more numerous, and lighter blue, or very light blue, sky blue flowers. Blue Kamas is native to Western North America, extending from British Columbia and Alberta to Washington, Idaho, Montana, and Utah, and south to California. It inhabits grasslands such as prairies and meadows, as well as forest edge and along rivers from sea level to mid elevations. Kamas comes from a pre-Columbian First Nation language, meaning sweet, referring to their bowl, similar to a sweet onion, but only about a centimeter wide. Kamasia Kwamash, Kamas, is a spring ephemeral, or surviving winter as an underground bulb. In spring, the plant sends out first leaves, numerous basal leaves, that are relatively thin, few millimeters, and usually shorter than the flowering scape. The scape, it's a flowering stem that has no leaves, so a leafless flowering stem. And um, it's a raceme producing numerous flowers that can range from light blue to um, purple blue to deep purple, and occasionally even white. It has six steeples which are petals and sepals that look alike, even though they're pretty clear in two worlds. Their stamens, also six, have anthers that start yellow and then they turn blue or purple. The pistil has a three-divided stigma, very fragile and thin, and here at the base, the ovary is also a three-chambered ovary. After the pollination and fertilization, the tepals will fall off, the stamens will fall off, and the ovary will start developing into a fruit, which is an ovoid capsule with numerous dark black seeds. Besides this edible kamas, its bulbs, in the same plains, meadows, and prairies, there is another kamas, which is called deadly kamas and it's in a different family and a different genus, but the bulbs look quite similar. So the best way to enjoy the bulbs and not suffer the consequences is to actually pick them when you know for sure you're dealing with this edible kamas, the blue kamas. Nowadays, pre-Columbian populations, First Nations people are picking the bulbs in spring instead of what in the past used to be a fall endeavor. Defkamas is toxicoscordion, which literally translates in toxic garlic from Greek scordion, venenosum. I mean, that kind of tells you it's not a good idea to mess up with that plant, right? And it's in a family that's notorious for its venomous, which are not venomous. Plants are poisonous, animals are venomous. So that also includes um, trilliums and um, a an European trillium has actually four leaves and petals and everything, and that's called Paris, and is known as being poisonous. But also Veratrum, or Indian hellebore, which is also known for being poisonous. And here in the Northwest, in a Veratrum viridae, it's the plant that I'm talking about. So uh, poisonous kamas, it's in the Melanthinaceae. But this is Asparagaceae. Its name, Kamas, comes from a pre-Columbian language. And this particular plant was a very important plant, and it's, again, a very important plant to cultures of pre-Columbian people. So coastal populations did not have a grain, but this is uh, one of the plants that supplemented that need. So um, what they used to do, they would come in spring, they would get rid of the poisonous Kamas, and then um, they would tender to those pastures, including with occasional fire and weeding and so on. So they can come back in the fall and dig the bulbs, now knowing that they are just the edible kamas. The bulbs are pit roasted, boiled, dried, and pounded into flour. 
they're very sweet and good tasting, but one of the sugars it contains, it's inulin, which does not cause a sugar spike, but it can cause flatulence and even indigestion. If you have any prairie in the native range of this plant, you could try to encourage it to catch a bulb hold on your land. Besides a delicious bulb, blue kamas, it's an ornamental plant, not for cut flowers, but for creating a native plant habitat. Instead of introducing bluebells or hyacinths from across the ocean, you might explore how can you create your own native plant habitat. Encouraging more native plants on your land can bring back the very intricate relationships between plants and pollinators and other members of a healthy ecosystem, creating a healthier planet for a healthy humanity. Together with a very busy bee, 